Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thank you for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a 2021 launch. This is the Grand Seiko Elegance Collection SBGX 349 The Gecka. Celebrating the night sky and all of its romance, this is a watch of an intermediate size in stainless steel, 34 millimeters in diameter, 10.9 millimeters thick. From lug tip to lug tip, I measure 40.7 millimeters with an 18 millimeter spacing between the lugs. So normally I talk about lower limits of wrist size for wearing a big watch. Now I'm gonna talk about upper limits for wearing a small watch. If your wrist is any smaller than mine, I recommend you step up to a larger case. This is a very traditional mid 20th century style dress watch size, but if your wrist is over 16 centimeters circumference and mine is 16, you're gonna want a bigger Grand Seiko. That said, nice and flat, it'll easily slide underneath a dress cuff. It is a dress watch and it will do that beautifully. Taking a quick look at the strap, like the watch, minimalist. We have large rectangular scale alligator leather on the top. It's a little bit brighter than navy. I would say ultramarine. And it's a semi-gloss finish. Also note that there's a little bit of bolstering to give it volume, and then it uses a bonded structure. So there's calfskin on the bottom, there's gator on the top, and they're bonded together with adhesive. This is sometimes used to create a sleeker, thinner strap when stitching would be inappropriate or break up the mass of the material with unwanted extraneous details. We have a vintage Grand Seiko logo on the buckle because this is part of the Elegance collection. It's going to have that 1960s Grand Seiko logo. And the case is an homage to the original 3180, the original Grand Seiko watch launched in 1960. You can see it is beautifully mirror polished and that is the manual tin plate polishing that Grand Seiko calls Zaratsu polish executed by holding the surface to be polished directly against a spinning tin plate. It is an artisanal process that leaves the case black polished, optically flawless, and yes, this art takes about three years to learn. Now the timepiece has a dramatically domed and cambered sapphire, and the idea there is to create the loft of a 1960s plexiglass with some of the off-axis distortion you would get of the dial through that plexi. The dial is a lovely rich lacquered blue, and you can see it matches the strap perfectly. What really sets it apart, aside from the fact that it's a very clean three-hand no-date dial, is the quality of Grand Seiko dials in general, starting with that lustrous lacquered base, but the real highlight is the dial furniture, the logo, the indices, and the hands. You can see that they've been faceted, with the facets alternately satinated and polished, and this is all done manually using diamond-tipped milling tools by artisans who only create these little microstructures all day long. You'll appreciate that the hands in particular are satinated across their top and then they're razor-like on their flanks with polished outer facets. There is a counterweighted lancet style second hand that has a black polished cap and all of this is applied manually as well as crafted manually. This is a quartz watch and it's one of the greats. You're dealing with the no date Grand Seiko 9F61. The 9F family first debuted in 1993, and it is one of the foremost families of luxury quartz movements in the world. Turning the watch over, you can see not a whole lot to see on the reverse side. We have that lovely vintage Grand Seiko lion sitting on a chiseled base, and all of this is water resistant to 30 meters. The movement has lots to recommend it. Three years of power reserve, it uses a double pulse motor system so that the hands can be long, extended, and yet relatively energy efficient. Normally, quartz watch hands are very thin or very short. Uh, these are neither. These have a nice full presence and an arcing length over the dial, stretching right out to the edge. You can see that the minute hand kisses the minutes and seconds track. The watch does include a hacking or stop seconds function, and it is accurate to 10 seconds per year. Remember, a standard quartz caliber is going to be accurate to about 15 seconds a month. This is 10 seconds a year. It uses a aged quartz crystal 
in combination with thermocompensation. So thermocompensation is a sophisticated refinement that you will not find on most quartz movements. It ensures that changes in temperature up or down will not greatly alter the timing of the watch. And although it is not highly anti-magnetic, it meets the ISO 764. That's the ISO for an anti-magnetic watch, which is 4800 ampere per meter, which this is. It also has a quartz trimmer built in. It's a nine joule movement serviced by a watchmaker, built and tuned by a watchmaker, and a lot of the tuning is performed with that trimmer. Not only does it allow the watch to be set very precisely, but over time, as quartz crystal drift takes place, that trimmer can be used to cancel out the aging of the crystal, though these are pre-aged crystals, so there's only a little bit of that on the 9F family watches. And as you can see, it is a lovely looking movement with absolutely no stagger to the seconds hand when it stops. And you can't see the movement, but what I'm saying is lovely is the precision that's evident, that long arcing seconds hand, and the way it anchors itself to a stop almost as though there were a lever escapement. That is because of an anti-backlash system that's built into these movements. And though you can't see the movement, it is quite attractive to the eye. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.